Hey everybody, it's me, Andy. And I'm Sean. And this is the Commander's Brew. This week, Vevictus Asmadi the Dyer. Here we go. Uh, of course, uh, if you're watching right now on YouTube, uh, just make sure you like and subscribe uh, to this channel. But before we get going on the deck, uh, we just want to address the pretty big change that, that's happening to this here YouTube channel. We're actually going to be um, uh, cutting down a lot of the content and just getting you kind of the uh, the pure brew. We're just going straight to the cards these days uh, with this. And uh, our Brews News segment, which usually runs after the podcast, is going to be a separate thing uh, that exists just on YouTube from now on. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to see the extra features, in a way, uh, the longer version, just check out the audio podcast version where we have a lot of extra stuff in it. That's the same. Yeah, that's the same. Uh, that's going to be uh, uh, your your good old classic Commander's Brew full podcast. Whereas like the YouTube, it's kind of been diverging for a while now, just like the way we do Brews News and everything. That's really once was an audio bit, and whereas now it's definitely we produce it full on for video. So a lot of the stuff can get lost in the in the like the audio translation of it. So it's just best that it lives there anyways. And yep. um, and yeah, you know, just like. Shorter YouTube videos seem to be more popular. The medium is the message. That's right, right? So uh, we just want to make this as uh, as uh, consumable to as many people who want to uh, get into it as possible. So yeah, without further ado, uh, here Great. is The Victus Asmati the dire Brand new C uh, Corset M19, uh, brand new Elder Dragon. This was the one, if you listen to our set review, that we were kind of the most excited about, probably aside from Nicol Bolas, but um, uh, obviously that card is very expensive right now. And also, like, it's a Planeswalker, so it's a little different, you know what I mean? Like, it flips into a Planeswalker, whereas Vivictus is more like the classic, big, huge, flying Elder Dragon. Uh, let's get right into it. Vivictus is uh, three and Jund, so uh, three and black, red, green for the legendary Elder Dragon. It's a 6-6 six, six flyer. Whenever Vivictus Asmati the Dire attacks, for each player, choose target permanent that player controls. Those players sacrifice those permanents. Each player who sacrifices permanent this way reveals the top card of their library, then puts it onto the battlefield if it's a permanent card. So It's a little, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, chaos warp. Kind of like a chaos warp, except it gets sacrificed instead of shuffled into uh, right. their deck, right? So one of the things that uh, really jumped out at me about this uh specific mechanic is that you're going to get the bonuses from sacrificing and dying uh you know if you pick creatures and stuff yeah uh you're going to be able to deal with like enchantments and artifacts and lands very easily uh but you're not going to be so oppressive because they still are going to get something from that right they you know you might make them sacrifice their you know rogues passage and then they could turn over some huge creature from their deck so they you, could you know what i mean you, you it it it, it's uh, it's got a bit of, a bit of a chaos style of feel to it, and then you have to sacrifice stuff yourself as well. So you got to keep yes. that in mind. So it's a very Jun deck because there's a lot of sacrificing going on, um, but without that feeling of like I'm I'm so oppressed I can't play anything onto the battlefield because you'll still play stuff, just that you might turn into other things eventually. I like that little splash of chaos too. That always makes it deck fun and uh, keeps it out of the. 100 percent power range too it really does it really does and especially that bit of you have to sacrifice your own stuff because uh yeah. you yeah yeah anyways it it it, it happened like unpredictable things happen with this deck and uh but not so much that the chaos like totally derails anyone's game plan and not so oppressive that it people feel like they can't play so like this yeah. really sits in this perfect little range of of you know uh, uh being just that kind of uh, oppressive, but not too much, and you know, uh, chaosy, but not too much. Very, very. As fun. a six mana, without haste, this is going to happen. I don't know what two, three times in a game. Maybe it's not going to be super oppressive. No, exactly, exactly. <clears throat> now, obviously, you're going to want to protect it and stuff like that. You know, your classic things. But anyways, um, so yes, uh, the that's the commander. Uh, the general uh uh strategy you're looking at here is yeah we want to take advantage of when things are sacrificed and when things are thrown in the graveyard and then doing that ourselves as well so let's take a look at some of the uh things that will benefit uh us and our opponents sacrificing things okay so first up 
This is a card that I remember playing against Josh Lee Kwai, fan of the, fan, a friend of the show, fan of the show too, probably. Uh, and he was like, I remember when this card came out, but I have never seen it in Commander. But guess what? Cloth of Fed Soul Hoarder <laughs> is not is not bad, especially in this deck. Sean, why don't you go, go ahead and read this one? Cloth of Fed Soul Hoarder 4, Black Black for a legendary creature, Demon. It is 6-6 six, six with flying. And whenever a permanent owned by another player is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you draw a card and you lose one life. Ooh. So you're drawing a ton of cards here. You're losing a bit of life. Uh, but you know what? That's not a big deal. Um, and also getting a 6-6 flyer while you're at it, which is really, really good. Um, uh, but that's not a big deal because you'll be gaining some life in this deck with cards like Blood Artist. Uh, uh-huh. The one in a black for the 01, that whenever another creature dies, target player loses a life and you gain a life. And then and uh, also, we have a similar similar thing, but this won't gain us life. But this is a this is a powerhouse in this deck. Yeah, this Poison Tip one. Archer uh, just released from M19. Kind of the best of all worlds. Two black green for an elf archer that is 2-3 with reach and death touch. So already a fantastic blocker. We call these rattlesnake cards. So like people aren't going to want to attack into you because no matter what they have, unless it has first strike, is there go- it's going to die. But whenever another creature dies, each opponent loses one life. That's great. Yeah. So this Poison Tip Archer is sneakily good because what it does is it takes all of the cards that we know that are like Blood Artist and uh, uh, Zulaport Cutthroat is another one, which is, uh, but that only triggers off of creatures that you control when they die. It hits everyone for one and you gain one. Uh, uh, Blood Artist and uh, the other vampire, the flying one, is whenever another creature dies, target player loses one life and you gain a life. Right. Poison Tip Archer is whenever. And whenever another creature besides this dies, everyone, all of your opponents lose a life. You don't gain a life, though. But it because it'll trigger from, like, it's, if you're playing in a four-player game, you attack with Vivictus. And if you if you don't sacrifice your own creature, that's three, but you make them each sacrifice one creature, that's three uh, triggers of that. So everyone just loses three life. Oof. Like, that's, that's, that adds up quick. Right, yeah. and, then, and, that, and that's not to mention the other just creatures dying in the game like normal, right? Right, and mm-hmm. I want to point out a poison tip archer is, it's got that great kind of wrath protection where it's like if anyone wraths the board, it's like well everyone's gonna lose a ton of life by that happening. But even if you're like well, this is a case where like people want their stuff to be exiled. Where yeah. normally when you exile the board, people are like, okay, well, I don't want my things to be exiled, so I'll just sack everything to my sack Alice. It's like, well, are you sure about that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Poison Tip Archer can get very scary, especially if you bring this guy down late game and, yeah, just Ooh. drop a wrath. I mean, it can get pretty, pretty wild. Yeah, this guy's not afraid of snakes. So, th- yeah, like, th- I'm excited to talk about this card because, like, it's kind of like a new... Come- like, it's in two colors, so obviously that's going to be a bit more restrictive, but it's a very good card. Yeah, for these types of decks. Uh, what's next here? Ooh, Overseer of the Damned. Five black black for a demon that's 5-5 five five with flying. Already just a lot of beef in the air that flies anyway. So yeah. it's good creature bodies. But whenever Overseer of the Damned enters the battlefield, you may destroy target creature. That's a plus. Whenever a non-token creature an opponent control dies, create a tapped 2-2 two two black zombie creature token. Ooh. So here we go. Now, every time we attack with Vivictus, we're going to get a few more tapped zombie creatures, which we can future sack to Vivictus and maybe upgrade or we don't care about him. Exactly. That's the thing. We're going to turn our 2-2 zombies that we get from making them sacrifice their creatures and probably get something decent enough as well. Right? Or they might just hit a land. You never know. Uh, uh, and you'll be able to sack your zombies in the future. And that interaction is very, very good. Because if you can create this, like, uh, cycle of not actually having to lose your own stuff, then Vivictus gets really, really, uh, yeah. really, really good. He's still quite good, even if you, you know, occasionally have to sacrifice a land, or maybe you've got uh, just some other creature that isn't really pulling its weight at this point, like a utility creature or something. Um, you can, you know, sacrifice those in a pinch, but you want to get something like Overseer the Damned going, and then you can really start uh, start that like that engine. Yep. Uh, another great engine, speaking of which, is, uh, and a win condition in its own right, is Revel in Riches. Four and a black for the enchantment from uh, uh, Ixalan? Yeah. Uh, whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, create a colorless treasure artifact token with tap, 
sacrifice this artifact, add a man of any color. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control 10 or more treasures, you win the game. Now, we've talked about this card on the show before and how is it just generally very good and should go in a lot of decks. Yep. Um, you know, that's up to you. Uh, I think that there is a, an argument there. Whether or not people actually do it is, you know, is whatever. But um, like we talked about earlier, Wrath Protection, Revel and Riches, if there's more than 10 creatures you, that you, uh, your opponents control, you know, or 10 or more, you can't Wrath the board. Because I'll just get ten treasures and then win the game. You better have yeah. some, some of that enchantment destruction. You have to fo- you have to be able to follow up with a, a vandal blast. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot that you have to do, right? If you want to do that, uh, plus just the general sort of grindiness of it, where it's like, okay, an opponent creature died. Guess what? I've just ramped myself for the for one turn, right? Um, uh, Fix my mana as well. Uh, or in Vevictus's case, uh, just got some pure sacrifice fodder because we can just sack these little these little artifacts yeah right oh my and, then, gosh. and then get a real permanent from our deck yep it's yep. very very good this is uh yeah this is again one of those like engine cards that allows you to uh just get in with evictus and not worry about your own board and and actually even help yourself develop your board because you're also at ramping and, and fixing your mana yeah and maybe you just do it enough that you win that's probably not gonna happen but very the possibility it's a real possibility that's the thing revel riches isn't some far off goal that you like you know it's not like a planeswalker's ultimate like if it sits around for a little while and isn't super uh threatening people like it's 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 a real possibility you'll eventually win with this card just by the game doing its normal thing yeah exactly and therefore people will aim to remove it which is pretty okay too it's not it's not uh you, you're not like that bummed out to lose it although obviously it's it's a good card i mean th- they might try to remove it by removing you <laughs> yeah that's right uh this next one uh andy you, it, you've it's eternal thirst uh you've put in brackets after it too cute too question cute. mark and i gotta say this scary vampire angel is not cute it is terrifying <laughs> <laughs> is the card too cute though maybe it's too too cute i don't know <laughs> i know what you mean eternal thirst one in a black enchantment aura auras are always tricky but it says enchant creature enchanted creature has lifelink and whenever a creature an opponent controls dies put a plus on plus encounter on this creature again opponents creatures are going to be dying so we're going to be benefiting by putting plus on plus encounters on this maybe this is the thing where we don't put it on vivictus as Mari. maybe we put this on like one of our giant demons and so our opponents are forced to be like i can only remove one thing i guess i'll remove this giant demon that's gonna straight kill us or more likely they're gonna remove evictus and you're still gonna have this huge demon with lifelink which is yeah always good so yeah yeah, the idea though is to put it on evictus because then you make him a a true elder dragon and get his power up to seven on your first on the on the first time you attack with him right because he's six six yeah, so uh, you can put Eternal Thirst on there. Now he has Lifelink, which is actually very helpful in the deck because there's a couple of things like like Kothafed where like you're you get hit for the uh, for the card draw and stuff like that. So a lot of the card draw in this deck is black based, so it, it tends to hit your life as well. So a little bit of Lifelink, a little bit of Lifelink is going to be helpful. Plus, just kind of you know randomly turning Vevictus or one of your uh, um, flying demons or something into the big this big massive threat on the board is. Uh, is uh, very very helpful. So I think this well, this card is maybe a little cute, and like it's got a pretty low um, uh, floor. You know, the ceiling can also get kind of high on this one. Again, if it wasn't for the lifelink, I wouldn't include it. But yeah, this is a common from uh, by the way from uh, um, I guess it was included in Iconic Masters, but it's from M fifteen, and I yes. never thought I would put this in a commander deck. I remember I remember this card. Yeah, there I am including there it in go. here. There we go. So. As you may have guessed, uh, we don't like to sacrifice our own things unless they're like little tokens that we've made because someone else has killed stuff. So um, one, this is kind of the main synergy that I went for. I, I, I thought about Vevictus, and there's a couple different ways you can build this, this commander. Uh, you can really focus on land and land recursion and destruction, things like that. Same thing for a lot of things. Like you can recur, obviously, creatures. You can even do like an artifact type of thing with this deck if you want. Uh, but I thought about taking things that are not ours and whether it be when they die or before they die uh, and uh, getting value off of them this way. So one of the ways I thought to do that was to play a card 
like might makes right. Uh, six mana enchantment, five and a red. At the at the beginning of your combat on your turn, if you control each creature on the battlefield with the greatest power, you gain control of target creature and opponent controls. Uh, on tap it, it gets haste, and then bam. So what you do with might makes right. And I guess we should just read these other two, too, because it's basically the same thing. Sure. Uh, next up is Hijack. Uh, one red red sorcery. Gain control of target artifact or creature until end of turn. Untap it against haste until end of turn. Classic threat and effect. Yeah. And then the trade. Uh, oh, yeah. And then I also have Trader's Blood here, but I didn't put it in the in the net tabs because who cares? Uh, Trader's Blood is just the same thing, except it gives the creature trample. So you get some options, kind of. You get to grab a, either a massive creature and give them trample, or you can... Uh, have a little bit of uh, wiggle room with hijack and grab an artifact if something if something like that's really uh, that you'd really like instead. But basically, what we're doing with the with all these cards, all these threat and effects, is we're gonna nab something, then attack with Vivictus, then use their thing that you just stole as as the your version of the sacrifice. So you're gonna get hopefully a permanent by sacrificing their thing. Plus, you get to kill another thing that they took. Or, or that that they had on their battlefield. So living the dream, right? Living the dream, and again, like not super oppressive or anything. Like I know sometimes decks that are built around stealing uh, creatures, you know, play groups aren't the biggest fan of that because it like it prevents you from wanting to play creatures because you're just like, well, he's just gonna steal them all. Like he has this crazy like recurrable engine where he just steals everyone's creatures. It's like, well, that's not what this is. Might makes right is is good, but it only takes one creature per turn. So it'll take one of your opponent's creatures. And then even then, it's actually kind of hard to get going because you do need the biggest creature on the board. And sometimes you might not have that. We do have a lot of big uh demons and our dragon's pretty big and you know that sort of thing. So hopefully we can make that happen. But uh when you do it's it's a real powerhouse. Stealing yeah. people's stuff and then sacrificing it is uh, really fun, I'll tell you. And like I said, it's not as, it's not super oppressive, so it uh, it actually um, makes for a ton of fun. Sean, why don't you that... uh, why don't you take this next one? This one is a uh, okay. You know, one of the I believe this was probably the first card I thought of when I started building this deck. Ooh, it that betrays. It's a pricey Eldrazi, 12 mana. But, you know, we're probably going to use some of those treasures. Well, as from far as Eldrazi... Riches. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought you meant money-wise. No, I was going to say, no, as far no, as Eldrazi no. goes, it's not pricey, but yes. No, 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 no. Uh, pricey for mana, 12 yes. mana. But we're going to use some treasures. We're going to get there with some ramp and stuff. But it's an 11-11 with Annihilator 2. That's fine. But the key phrase is, whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-token permanent... Put that card onto the battlefield under your control. Wow. Yeah, so the section of this uh, deck is called Give Me That. <laughs> uh, so whether you get it before with like your threatened effects, or you can get it after. They can sacrifice it, and it that betrays just gives it to you. Amazing. This is going to be a real lightning rod, because first of all, it's an 11-11 with Annihilator 2. But really, like you said, that ability is just, that's just too good. You know, like, people just don't want that to live. They're going to use their removal on this guy for sure, uh, which is tough because it's a very big mana investment. But uh, if you can get it going, and if you can somehow protect it, uh, if that betrays, will win you the game. Oh, yeah. No question yeah. about it. it, it people can't even sack fetch lands. Like, it's like... Yeah, exactly. This card, this card is oppress. <laughs> yeah, this card is definitely one of the meaner cards in the deck. But, you know, you really do have to pay for it. Like, you're not just going to be able to yeah. get this for free, right? Like, 12 mana yeah. is a lot. It's fair. Um, it's fair, exactly. Uh, totally fair. Uh, the next two cards are basically the same card, so we'll just kind of read them as one. Uh, we've got sure. Grave Betrayal, uh, and we have Limb Duel the Necromancer. Uh, Limb Duel the Necromancer is a worse version of Grave Betrayal, so I'll just read Grave Betrayal. Uh, it's an enchantment that says, whenever a creature you don't control dies, return it to the battlefield under your control with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. At the beginning of the next end step, that creature is a black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. Uh, Limb Duel is the same thing. Is, in fact, it's the same cost as seven mana, five black, black. Uh, but it's a creature. It's a four, four creature. And you actually have to pay one and a black to, to make that effect happen. So if some, so if a creature dies, you pay one and a black and then you'll get it. Uh, it doesn't get a plus one, plus one counter. However, Limb Duel can then pay one and a black to regenerate a zombie. So whatever the creature you get from that is, uh, will be a zombie so you can regenerate it after. These cards are crazy, right? Like these cards are, these cards do become a little bit, um, uh, oppressive in a way that's like people won't want to play their board wipes because you'll just get all the creatures. I've seen 
I, I we were playing. Uh, we had six people out at a commander night. I remember, and um, Alistair had his uh, Joda deck going, right? So five colors, just like putting huge enchantments and huge creatures on the board. He had yeah. Grave Betrayal out, and he had a crazy, crazy board. But and everyone else had a pretty decent board too, and they were just like, "Well, we can't board wipe because." He's got Grave Betrayal. He'll just get everything that dies that we control, and then we have nothing. And he's, he'll just beat us with our own stuff. And it's like, wow. <laughs> that's – that's. and then, of course, but, you know, Alistair is getting a bigger and bigger board as, you know, as these people wait and they can't do anything about it. So this card is real, real good. I mean, again, seven mana, not cheap. Uh, you pay for – you know, you get what you pay for, but a very, very powerful effect. It's a little bit of that seven mana do nothing kind of business, right? Like at is, first, yeah. nothing happens. Not unlike Revel and Riches, but man, watch out. Well, and I mean, luckily not the case if you have your commander out because you can cast yes. Grave Betrayal and then attack with Evictus and then get something on that end step. Uh, right. Uh, three things. I always assume a four player game. Right. Yeah. So you can get three. If they have creatures, yeah, three creatures. Um, it kind of becomes a bit of a, a blatant thievery. It does for a creatures. Bit. Yeah, for yeah. creatures. Yeah, for sure. And if you're playing against a deck that the good thing about like, it's like, oh, I, I won't be getting creatures if I'm playing against like a spell heavy deck or, you know, something that doesn't run a ton of creatures. But if that's the case, then they're probably not running a ton of permanence. So yeah. like they might like if they do get something out like an, an artifact or an enchantment or something, you're going to be able to take that out and maybe just give them a land back for it. So or nothing at all or nothing because they just flip that top card, right? They just get one chance. And if it's not a permanent on top, they get nothing. Uh, that's a little bit of foreshadowing there for us. Uh, but uh, <laughs> let's take a look at this very last card uh, just because it's it's, you know, it's just a fun commander card. Oh, it's the hardest one to say. Sepulchral Primordial uh, <laughs> five black black for an avatar five four with intimidate so it can only be blocked by black creatures and artifact creatures and when sepulchral primordial enters the battlefield for each opponent basically reanimate one creature from their graveyard yeah it's an etb trigger uh uh one of the great things about this deck is that it's actually pretty easy to recur uh creatures from our graveyard and then this guy makes it easy to recur creatures from their graveyard so you can Get Sepulchral Primordial, get a bunch of stuff from their graveyards, attack with Evictus, sacrifice this guy, and then because of your Phyrexian Reclamation or something like that, get this guy back in your hand and cast him again. And yeah, again, seven mana is a lot, but this is some real serious value here. Um, uh, because, you know, they can have an Avacyn out, you can attack with Evictus and target it, and they have to sacrifice it. It's not a destroy thing, right? As long as you can make, make the target happen, it's probably gonna die unless they have some way to stop that, like one of the one of the angels that stops sacrificing or something. Right, right, true. Right, that those that, those are your, like your worst enemies, hexproof, and then something that does that. Um, but yeah, okay, well there you go. So that's that's how we're like we we have a lot of ways to uh, uh, steal things, sacrifice things, and then even get those things back for ourselves if we want, which is I think that's like the main synergy. That's like the main stuff we want to be doing in this deck. That's a, which makes it the most fun. Yeah, um, and all the while your opponents are still, you know, being able to put uh, permanents out on the battlefield, so they're not feeling like it's. Hopefully, they're not feeling like it's too dire. Just dire enough, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is yeah. Marty the dire. This is Marty the kind of dire. Yeah, the pretty dire. Uh, okay, so next, uh, next here is the we got the neat moves. Oh, neat Working moves, my on favorite on neat moves. Trying to lose some awkward magic blues. Working <laughs> on our neat moves. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay. And it's summertime. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is sweet summertime. All right. So neat moves. Uh, Sean, why don't you go ahead and uh, read. These kind of all fall in the same category. So we can all include them as, as one discussion Boom. here. I'm going to hit you with three artifacts. Uh, not artifacts. No. But they all remind me of like tall things. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, well. We got a glaring spotlight. It's an artifact for one. Creatures your opponents control with hexproof can be the targets of spells and builds you control as though they didn't have hexproof. This is a great way to get around hexproof things that Vivictus cannot pick to get them to dump away. And then as a side bonus, I always forget this about glaring spotlight. Three, sacrifice glaring spotlight. Creatures you control gain hexproof <coughs> and are unblockable. That's kind of like a... like. I'm going to win the game eventually. So like, that's not a bad 
move. That's not a I, bad move. Yeah, this is, yeah, I love this card. Uh, we've also got Arcane Lighthouse. Uh, it, it taps for a generic. It's a land, and you can pay one and tap until end of turn. Creatures your opponents control lose Hexproof and Shroud. Can't have Hexproof and Shroud. This one also deals with Shroud. And then we've got the brand new Detection Tower. Uh, taps for Colorless. It's a land. Uh, one and tap until end of turn. Your opponents and creatures your opponents control with Hexproof can be the targets of spells as you control as though they didn't have hexproof they're all kind of similar only mm-hmm. one of them deals with shroud proper mm-hmm. uh and that one arcane lighthouse also lets opponents do things to things the other two only mean you get to do things exactly yeah uh which we ultimately don't really care about but uh arcane lighthouse will will yeah open up all of your opponent's stuff to even your, your other opponent's removal uh and with shroud detection tower just hexproof and then glaring spotlight is uh is the same thing. Everyone can target stuff. Yeah, I want to um, remind everyone too. This is one of the reasons we're kind of just. Oh no, it's just you shifting. control. Sorry. Anyways, this is one of the reasons we're quickly shifting kind of how we do things here for budget, right? Arcane Lighthouse is perfect in this deck, but it's like a three to four dollar land, uh, which is not unreasonable. But it's the kind of thing that would we would be prevented from using in a fifty dollar deck, uh, and you know we want the deck to be as much fun as possible. So that's part of it. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, I know for a fact that like this is a card that I put in almost all my commander decks, right? Yeah. If, especially anything where the commander wants to target stuff. It's an auto include for me. This card, uh, the new detection tower, that it's going to be like that for me too, I think. Um, yeah. Because these, the, like, hexproof is the number one thing that are going to be on Voltron commanders or just powerful creatures. God forbid somebody get like an archetype of endurance out and then just hexproof everything. Like, that's a just a true nightmare but it's not so bad when you have an arcane lighthouse or you know a glaring spotlight out and glaring spotlight is a card i absolutely love again because of uh that extra ability is it very relevant uh yeah just allows you to kill someone sometimes when when you need to uh while also fully protecting them from from removal if that's the other thing you want to do uh these cards are really really good and they're even better in this deck so uh yeah i would definitely recommend you playing all three of these in a uh, Vivictus Asmati deck. Uh, here's a neat move. Uh, we also we also like to build in a little bit of uh, rec- um, not recursion, uh, uh, redundancy, right? You want some things that do the same, do other things that do the thing that your commander is doing or that your deck wants to do, right? So this is a really neat one. Uh, in sort of looking for the same wording as what Vivictus Asmati does, I found Aid from the Cowl, three oh, yeah. green green for an enchantment with Revolt. And at the beginning of your end step, if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a permanent card, you may put it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, you put it on the bottom. So, like, it does Vivictus's thing because of what Vivictus does, right? So yes. you're going to sacrifice something that you control, and then Aid from the Cowl is going to get you something as well as Vivictus getting you something. Wow. So you actually get two things that way. So now you're cooking, right? Now you're cooking with gas there. A uh, truly neat move. It's a very neat move, I gotta say. I, I, I'm re- like, yeah, this is a this is a neat card in general, and again, just doubled up here. Uh, really, really fun to use the yep. Victus. And here's the thing. So after all of this, like we're talking about getting permanence, you know, off our off our top of our library and stuff. How do we ensure that that happens? Well, uh, how about cream of the crop, one and a green for an enchantment. Whenever a creature comes into play under your control, you may look at the top X cards of your library, where X is that creature's power. If you do, put one of those cards on top of your library and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So as long as we're able to cast a creature before we attack with Vivictus, we can ensure that the thing on top is a permanent. Not only that, we can make it a permanent that we really want to get out there. Yeah, absolutely. And and creatures coming into play counts for... Uh, when Vevictus puts something out there, right? Um, uh, so you can even like stack your next draw step kind of after he attacks. Uh, but hopefully what you're doing is you're playing out a creature from your hand and then uh, making sure that, yeah, the thing that Vevictus flips is going to be uh, a permanent. Uh, very, very strong card. Only two mana. I mean, I'm surprised we don't see this run a little more in Commander actually in, in green decks because it's actually very, very solid. Uh, and another uh, kind of fun way of of, uh, of uh, like manipulating the top of your deck and like kind of making sure that you hit permanence and things like that is fostered. It's interesting though. 
Two and two green for an enchantment. It says, whenever a creature you control dies, you can pay one. And if you do, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Put that card into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. So this is like kind of a weird combination with Vavictus because if you attack and you sacrifice a creature you control and you pay the one, you like you're 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 beating Vavictus's trigger to the first creature you'll find. So you'll go down to a creature, put it in your hand, and then do something else. So you kind of have to be careful but with uh like if you're playing this with other like uh, with like cream of the crop or something or if you've already stacked your deck you might not, might not want to foster, right? But uh, it's just a cool ability, and because you are going to be sacrificing creatures, there's like a couple sack outlets in here as well. So Foster, I think, is just going to be a um, a neat move. Uh, it's similar to uh, what's it called? Um, the what's it called there? The uh, the enchantment that does this, but you, you it's a sack outlet. It's one green. Oh 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 oh! Uh, yes yes yes. Uh, it's got a short form. We say short all the time. Ev Leap, Evolutionary Leap. Evolutionary Leap, yeah, that's right. But Evolutionary Leap itself is a sack outlet, right? Uh, which is great, of course. But uh, but Foster is actually like a triggered ability from a creature dying. So you actually get to use it with Evictus a lot. This is like a neat move that I was like, let's try this out. I think this card is actually pretty good. So uh, it would be, it's. I think you'd get a lot of value off of it with this commander. Yeah, D- does it work? The, like, I just don't know the order of things. Can we get in there before Vavictus flips the thing? So whenever a creature you control dies, so you, it, you his thing happens, so you... But but can we do anything in between his effect resolving? Like, like I know sometimes, like, if it's all one effect, you can't go into the oh, middle yeah, if of... It's, yeah, maybe you can't do it before, but it ultimately kind of doesn't matter, right? So if, so if you've stacked the deck, maybe it's better that way. Either way, you're going to be getting a creature to your hand no matter what, right? So, like... You get you 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 sacrifice your own creature. Vavictus's ability goes like happens, and then you can and then you foster essentially. Yeah, foster the people. Yeah, foster the people. Yeah, uh, cool. So those are some neat moves. Those are some very neat moves. I love it. Uh, this sounds very fun, Andy. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is pretty fun. The really the 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 uh, one of the challenges was to not include too many things that like fully oppress your opponent's board because I, I never find stacks decks like that fun at all. No, right. No in multiplayer. So like I, I didn't include one, one of the cards that like if a creature you control dies, everyone sacks something, but it's the seven mana vampire. That's the guy that I include for decks like this. I actually don't like putting in uh, grave pact and uh, dictative Erebos. I find those cards to be a little too oppressive. Uh, people yeah. get depressed when they want to play creature decks and you have those cards out. It's true. I don't want to depress my... I don't know. And, and I don't have fun doing it either. Because then I just like, uh, you know. And obviously if they have enchantment removal or whatever, great, right? Like, no problem. But if they just didn't draw it and you just get to just... It just doesn't feel good. It just doesn't feel fun for me to do that stuff. Anyways. It, it's not too dissimilar from an Armageddon where it's like... I, I would hope that the game would end very quickly once that happens. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is, is it doesn't always do that. Yeah. Um, so some quick surprises and discoveries. Uh, uh, one of them here is uh, from uh, it's from Origins. It's uh, Shadows of the Past. One in a black. Whenever a creature dies, scry one. Yeah. So that's helpful. Uh, looking yeah. at the top of the deck there, and um, and then you can pay four in a black for each opponent loses two life and you gain two life, and uh, you can activate that ability if you have four or more creature cards in your graveyard, which is not hard to do in this deck at all. No. And then uh, take this other one here. One more surprise and discovery. Haunted Crossroads. Two in a black. It's an enchantment. Black. Put target creature from your graveyard on top of your library. Ooh, that's the card, Andy. Right? Wow. This card is this crazy is with huge. Vindictus. Yeah, it's really nuts. So. Uh, guarantees you a card from your graveyard uh, uh, um, into the battlefield, basically, with Vindictus. Wow. For one black. Huge. Yeah, it's wild. Uh, so there's another, and there's another card that does this. Uh, it's uh, one, it's like one and two green for the. It's from a like portal, but it's one of the ones I got reprinted from uh, Portal, not Portal. Um, is that what it's called? The ones that were only released in China and Australia. What are they called again? But yeah, oh, Portal. Uh, yeah, that's Portal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Portal. Okay. Portal. Uh, I can't remember I his think, name. It's something, know. but he has to tap to do it. But it's basically it's a creature that taps to do it and. Uh, it's a similar. It's the same effect, but very, very good. Both of those cards very, very strong with Vivictus. Yeah. 
Oh man, I would be inclined to ro- to slip in uh, a noxious revival in the deck. Yes, also very good. Yeah, it's about five bucks, but it's a powerful Phyrexian instant that costs you only two life, uh, and you get to put a card from your graveyard, or any graveyard, on top of its owner's library at instant speed. So you can you can even make someone else put something out with Vivictus this way. <laughs> if you or really want like it. yeah, or just like a non permanent. You could put like an instant or sorcery up there. Although they get to draw it next they turn, still get which to... is maybe not. Yeah. Right? What happens to Do it they? if they flip yeah, a I was blank? About to say. Yeah, no, Choose it just tar- you you just flip it and it stays there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Neat. Uh yeah, neat moves. Uh, and surprises and discoveries. So there you go. Those are those cards are v- very good. Um, let's take a but the let's take a look at the actual best cards. For top this three cards top for the three. deck. Stars three of the stars. deck. Star number three. Uh, Titania Protector of Argoth. Three. Wait, Sean. Huh? I know that we're not doing the budget report, but we could take all the cards and look at them in a. Decide oh if they're God. good or whatever, right? Like we can still that we can do that for the three stars, can't we? Okay, yeah, three stars of the deck. Here is where we take all of the star, all of the cards, line them up in order, and see which one is first, which one is second, <laughs> and which one is third. Quite literally, we do this, <laughs> and this is what it is. That is a true tragedy if we re- by the reworking of the podcast to not yeah. have the, the beeps. Yeah, right? Beep, 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 The three stars of the deck report. And now a special segment for the beeps, which are now disappearing. R.I.P. We'll miss you, Rip. In memoriam, the beeps. Yeah, in memoriam, the beeps. That weird, outdated thing. All right, yeah, go ahead. Read the number three star here. Titania, Protector of Argoth. So exciting to be able to include this in a deck. Three green, green, legendary elemental. This card dropped in price big time since its reprint. Uh, This is a legendary elemental, 5-3. When Titania, Protector of Argoth, enters the battlefield, return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's great. We might have sacked a land. We get Mm -hmm. to bring that back. Uh, And... Whenever a land you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, create a 5-3 green elemental creature token. This is, so if we don't need all those lands, we can throw into the graveyard and get an uh, elemental for it. Or we can sack these elemental tokens if they're the least impactful thing we have. Exactly. Titania is so strong because of this. And really, I wanted to include her at some point here. Uh, like, her and Revel and Riches are kind of on the same level. Uh, I like the 5-3s cause, just because they... They get in there and and deal damage as well, obviously. Five um, is significant, right? Uh, um, and obviously, you're going to get your Titania stuff off of any lands that sacrifice themselves, like your Evolving Wilds and so on. But um, but she's just so strong, and this is also going to go towards highlighting the fact that there's a real like the one of the new um, the, the 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 archetypes for the new Commander decks have have already been spoiled, of course. So uh, we talked about uh, the. Um, the Bant uh, Enchantress uh, uh, deck that's coming out. We talked about the uh, the the is it artifacts, the the manipulation of the uh, uh, Esper deck, and then the um, the Jun lands and like Vevictus Asmati is a real serious uh, a card in that deck, and maybe even a really good commander for that deck. There's a lot of really cool uh, land uh, synergies that you can do. Titania probably being one of the best of them. Uh, and ju- and she's so good that even in in this deck here, which isn't focused on messing with lands and sacrificing lands and so on, she's still so strong because you actually do end up sacrificing your lands a fair amount of time uh, if you don't have any of those engine cards or maybe you haven't uh, drawn a, a threat effect or anything like that. Titania can be a little bit of an engine all uh, on her own. Uh, oh, she's wow. very very strong in this deck. Who's number two? Number two is Yaheni, Undying Partisan, two and a black. For the 2-2 legendary Aetherborn Vampire with haste. And whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, put a plus one plus one counter on Yeheni. Undying Partisan. Very strong, obviously. Vevictus causing a lot of your opponent's stuff to die. Uh, Yeheni can get quite large. And then, of course, he uh, is a sack outlet as well. So sacrifice another creature. Yeheni gains indestructible until the end of turn. You know about Yeheni. You know about him. He's amazing. He's amazing. He stands up to board wraths. He 
is going to be going to get so huge in this deck and then be able to stick around after whatever your opponents try to do to him, basically. So uh, very, has, very strong. This deck has a lot of Wrath protection in it. Yeah, it does. Uh, which yeah. is great, because that seems to be a big weakness of it anyway. So it's glad I'm glad these are in here. Yeah, for sure. Uh, top star of the deck, we got Mazarek Crowl Death Priest. Andy, it's your deck. Why don't you take the first star? Three black green for the legendary Insect sh uh, Shaman. 2-2 two, two flyer, and it says when every player sacrifices another permanent, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. So Mazarek does it all, right? Uh, it takes your engine cards and, and uh, like, um, uh, uh, what's the guy there? Uh, Overseer of the Damned, uh, making those tokens. It takes, it turns your uh, your blood artists and, and your little creatures that you might have, your utility things. Uh, the tokens Titania makes for you. And like one attack with Vivictus, you make them. You make the three players you're playing against sacrifice something, and everything gets three counters on it. And all of a sudden, is now something your opponents have to worry about attacking them. Wow. Uh, so it very, very quickly turns your whole board, which like you might have one or two of those big creatures out, but the rest of the guys kind of sitting back doing things. But Mazarek turns everything you have into a, a massive uh, threat. Just a wow. crazy, crazy good card in this deck. And Mazarek himself will get. A bunch of counters and be a flying threat as well right so poof yeah number one star for sure mazrak's great yeah pretty good quite uh, quite good clearly the number one star great uh what a fun deck i i look forward to the excitement when that first vivictus as Mati trigger goes on the stack where everyone just gets to see like okay am i right. gonna get something <laughs> awesome or no good or like just in between very exciting very very exciting uh Lots of, uh, you know, lots of options with this deck when it comes to making your own version of it. Uh, throw in, you know, top of the deck manipulation uh, and things like that. That's going to really help a lot. Um, yeah, and you can go as mean as you want with this deck, too. You can you can even do stuff where, like, you control the top of your opponent's decks. Like, I feel like that's a bit much, but you, you can do it. Yeah. Anyways, Great. there you go. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll see you guys next week with a new deck. Bye. Bye. If you want to contact us, I'm at Sean Tabaris. And I'm at Andy Holbone. Send us an email at commandersbrew at gmail.com. You can find out when we go live on Twitch if you follow us at twitch.tv. And if you care to support us on Patreon, check us out at patreon.com. And you can find our deck list on tappedout.net. And if we forgot anything, commandersbrew.com. <laughs>